Okay, going live. <clears throat> Hi, everyone, and welcome to another Clean Machine Live. I'm Jeff Palmer, CEO and founder of Clean Machine Plant-Based Fitness Nutrition. <clears throat> Today, we're going to talk about creatine. Creatine is probably the most popular nutritional supplement for the sports nutrition sector. Uh, creatine, and, that, and that's for a good reason. Creatine uh, monohydrate has probably more studies done on it than any other um, uh, performance and enhancing nutritional supplement. Um, the positive news is that uh, uh, the creatine studies have shown over and over and over again that it enhances uh, physical strength, enhances uh, muscle growth, uh, it enhances overall performance, power output, force output, um, increase of APT, increase of endurance. I mean, it's really one of the best nutritional supplements out there. But <clears throat> creatine in our diet is different than supplemental creatine. And that's what this review uh, really is fascinating to me because it's taking a look at um, dietary creatine versus supplemental creatine. Um, creatine as an isolated supplement, excuse me, or creatine as what's found in food. So interestingly, I, I, most of you already know that I've been vegan for 37 years. So um, where do you get your creatine, <laughs> right? <laughs> Instead of where do you get your protein? Well, uh, creatine is made by animals. Um, it's not made by plants. So it's not found in the plant food uh, system. Uh, the good news is that we are an animal. And just like other animals that make creatine, we make creatine too. So our bodies can make creatine out endogenously, that's inside our bodies, out of uh, three different main amino acids, arginine, glycine, and methionine. So fortunately for the first two, glycine is very abundant in the uh, plant-based uh, food supply, as well as arginine. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, soy has higher arginine than, uh, than whey protein. So. Uh, you can actually get more than enough that you need to create all the endogenous creatine that your body needs for maintenance purposes. Now, the big news was that they were, the big theory then was, well, if uh, people on an omnivore diet, including meat products uh, like fish and, and meat and, and dairy and such, uh, are they getting more creatine and therefore having an advantage in muscle building and strength? And this research <clears throat> actually looked at 75 different uh, uh, research papers and citations and studies. So it, it's a big review of most of the uh, major research papers out there looking at creatine. And is there a difference between those on an omnivore diet, those including meat, a meat-based diet, or those on a meat-free diet? And the, the results were pretty surprising, but not to me. Uh, one, and I'm going to go right into the study here. So first, let me go ahead and put the study up on the screen. Um, now, the study will have a link, um, and I'm going to put that in the screen, but uh, the study will have a, hey, Jamil, hey, Patricia, good to have you on. Um, so let me put the study up here so that you guys can see it on the screen and in the chat box too. That way, uh, anybody looking at it, I will post all the studies. Um, let me go ahead and put it up here. So it says um, supplemental creatine, not dietary creatine, appears to improve exercise performance in individuals following an omnivorous diet or meat-free diet, vegan and vegetarians. Um, so this is a, a review of the research to take a look and see if there was a real difference one of the major differences that they saw right away was <clears throat> when they looked at a study from Watt et al., they looked at 13 endogenous and exogenous sources, that means outside the body, uh, summed up in individuals following an omnivorous diet, had about 1.94 uh, grams per day of create, created. So um, that's taking all the creatine that the food is is taking in. Let me go ahead and take this down now. So that's in the omnivorous diet, they took all the creatine that was coming in as a food supply for, like from animal products and plus 
that combined with all the endogenous, and they got 1.94 grams per day. Now, remember, for uh, ergogenic effects, ergogenic meaning uh, performance enhancing, right? Uh, strength gains, muscle gains, endurance gains, uh, VO2 max, all of the benefits that have already been well established through the research. Are these, is, is this an advantage in those who are eating meat because they're getting more creatine in their diet? And then when they looked at those consuming a meat-free diet, their body was compensating for that. When it's not coming from the outside, their body made more on the inside. And the difference between meat eaters and uh, vegans was only 0.47 grams per day. That's less than half a gram or roughly about a half a gram of creatine which you would have to take about 10 times that much to get performance enhancing benefits, which is what's shown in the uh, research, especially established by the uh, journal of the ISSN, the sports nutrition, biggest body of looking at some of the studies in sports nutrition. Hey, Stephen, good to see you. Um, so the amount of endogenous creatine created by uh, those eating a plant-based diet was not significantly different from those who were eating creatine in the animal-based diet. So this idea that, oh, uh, you know, those eating animals, uh, creatine only comes from animal products and we're going to have better muscle building is just simply not true. There wasn't really much of a difference at all in the amount of creatine. And there wasn't a significant enough difference, only half a gram difference between vegans who were creating it endogenously and those who were consuming creatine in the food supply through animal products. So no difference there. Now, what some of the previous studies looked at may have had some faultiness to it. So the next thing they, uh, they looked at is the blood levels. So they did notice a significant up to 50% more creatine in the blood of those omnivores. So they thought, oh, was well, that an advantage? And then when they looked at that, they found that the blood levels were about 40 times less than what was stored in the actual muscle tissue. That's the more important factor. But the only way you can do that is by taking a muscle biopsy, sticking a little needle in there and pulling out a little chunk of your muscle and measuring the phosphocreatine stores in the muscle. That's the important thing. So when they were looking at those studies saying, hey, omnivores have a lot more phosphocreatine in the bloodstream. Yeah, but so what? It's 40 times less than what's actually stored in the muscle. So that is a very insignificant amount, even though you're measuring it. So that measurement of creatine in the bloodstream should not have any significance at all. And of course, it doesn't. So they next lined up, uh, is there a difference between those not consuming uh, uh, creatine uh, in, the, in the supplement form? No supplementation of creatine, animals, plants, right? And they found, is there an ergogenic difference? Were they getting strength gains or whatever? They actually found in some cases, the plants were actually better. Now, they, the researchers did put the little caveat in there that the plants have a more alkaline forming, they have more antioxidants, they have more fiber, things like butyrate production in the gut, healthier gut. All of these cofactors may have made up for the difference in creatine. So that's just a hypothesis, though, that's not tested or bound out in the study because that would be very invasive. You'd have to go in and actually pull out tissue in, in multiple different places in order to get that uh, type of information. Okay, so next they looked at, okay, well, if there is no difference between non-creatine users, was there a difference between plant-based and animals when they supplemented with creatine? When they did both groups and found out that, yes, actually, the plant-based folks actually did increase creatine levels by a larger difference. But when you have a starting point, that it basically came up to maximal for both, even though there was a bigger difference because uh, vegans had, a, or those on a strictly plant-based meat-free diet had uh, a little bit lower to start with, they compensated for it so that they were just about the same. There was basically no significant difference when you added supplemental creatine between meat eaters and plant-based folks. So 
as you can see, I use creatine and I, even my 68th year of life can make very nice muscle gains um, from it as well as other supplementation. Now, what's really important here is that they found no difference um, for the meat and plant-based diet on exercise performance, strength gains, uh, muscle VO2. I'll, I'll go down the list because it's, it's pretty extensive here. Uh, let me uh, pull it up real quick. Um, okay, uh, so they acknowledged, and this is a direct quote from the study, they acknowledged that their experiment did not support the hypothesis that creatine supplementation more effectively augments exercise capacity in individuals who avoid meat than those who consume meat. So no basic differences there. And, and that was a big finding of the, of the study. And that was a very important piece um, that, uh, that really uh, spelled out, look, there's no real difference. And the difference is made up as soon as you supplement creatine. Now, the interesting th part of this is that create, the differences in creatine made no difference in their exercise performance from diet. But when you did supplement omnivores or the plant-based folks, they both equally increased their performance levels all the way across the board from uh, strength to power, to force, to uh, VO2 max, to endurance, all of it. So we know phosphocreatine works. It's a phosphate donor, picks up phosphate. Uh, uh, and then gives it to our energy molecule, ATP, that's adenine triphosphate. So the, what, what happens is the phosphate, a, ATP goes into the cell, kicks off a um, phosphate molecule, then it's ADP, diphosphate, that has two uh, phosphate molecules here. And then phosphocreatine comes and picks up a phosphate molecule and donates it to that and reactivates that ATP so it can go back inside the cell and re energize. That's what gives you that sustained strength, that sustained power, that sustained endurance. And that's why it's so effective. It's basically recycling our ATP from triphosphate, then the phosphate molecule kicks off, giving a burst of energy for the cell to use. And then phosphocreatine comes over and donates that phosphate, uh, phosphate molecule, puts it back to a uh, a TP triphosphate, and then it can go back into the cell and give more energy. So it's a good recycling effect to that. And that the creatine supplement equally uh, increase the strength gains, all of the benefits in both plant-based and animal-based subjects. Now, what about creatine in animal products? Is there a negative side to this? And this is where it gets interesting. Okay, um, so I'm going to directly quote from the study. Quote, according to the National Cancer Institute of the National Institutes of Health, when beef, pork, poultry, or fish are flame grilled or pan fried, their amino acids, remember, creatine is three amino acids, right? Arginine, glycine, and methionine. Um, their amino acids, sugars, and creatine contents react to form heterocyclic amines, or HCAs. Heterocyclic amines are cancer-causing. They, I'll, I'll quote directly from the study, laboratory experiments have found HCAs, or heterocyclic amines, to be mutagenic, it means causing mutations in the DNA causing DNA damage that may increase cancer risk, unquote. Quote, while clinical research indicates that creatine supplementation does not cause carcinogenic HCAs in humans, these chemicals are found in market elevated urinary concentrations following acute and chronic consumption of animal-based meals. Boom. Now that's a big difference. So this idea that you should be getting creatine from animal products actually may be the worst scenario possible. 
what you're doing when you're consuming creatine in an animal product is creating carcinogenic compounds, these hydro, uh, uh, heterocyclic amines, these HCAs that can cause cancer. So creatine in animal products, cancer causing supplemental vegan creatine, no cancer does not. And that's exactly the quote from the study. So being vegan, and supplementing or totally plant-based, meat-free, and getting your creatine from a supplement source, no risk of dangers. When you consume those animal products, there's the risk of those mutagenic, carcinogenic compound forms uh, that can come from when you heat uh, animal proteins. So to conclude this, one, Creatine is very safe when taken as a supplement, not in its animal forms uh, taken, consumed in meat, um, fish, um, other forms of animal products. So conclusion, quote from the study, research revealing discrepancies in creatine concentrations between individuals following an omnivorous versus a meat-free diet has not translated into differences in lean tissue muscle mass, muscle type, type one or two muscle fiber area, that's the, the amount of muscle, one rep uh, max bench press, leg press, power output, VO2 max, time to exhaustion, and other indicators of exercise performance. So no difference except a big difference when you supplemented creatine. All that creatine that you were getting from the animal products did not do anything as far as increasing performance, and it can be at risk for causing cancer. Supplementing, whether you're consuming an omnivorous diet or a plant-based diet, can and does improve uh, ergogenic effects or performance-enhancing effects, and it can do it safely. The supplemental version can do it safely, whereas the animal food-based version. So this idea, where do you get your creatine? Well, one, our body makes it, and two, when we supplement, regardless of your diet, it's better. It can give you major performance-enhancing benefits, and three, it is probably preferable to have a plant-based diet and consume uh, uh, supplemental creatine than getting it from uh, uh, animal products, which can actually then cause cancer. Quote from the study, considering the potential negative effects of dietary creation, creatine in the formation of carcinogenic HCAs relative to the rigorously demonstrated safety profile of supplemental creatine, sourcing creatine from supplements rather than food appears to be the safest, most effective method to consume creatine. In all, the claim that individuals following meat-free diets are in, at an exercise performance disadvantage relative to their uh, omnivorous counterparts due to dietary creatine remains unsubstantiated by scientific evidence. So that's pretty amazing. Um, so uh, Stephen's talking about, yes, we don't uh, supply a, a creatine product at this time. Creatine is only synthetically made right now. And um, I have a commitment not to, not to provide synthetic uh, products to them. But because of its safety and if its efficacy, I'm considering uh, doing it. So let me know your thoughts. If you know that uh, creatine is, 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 is made synthetically, although it's completely vegan um, and, and naturally in our body and shown over and over and over in published studies to be safe and effective, uh, would you use it if you know that it's synthetic? I would love to hear your feedback. Um, uh, I, I personally use it just because it's so extraordinarily uh, effective and very safe. It has uh, positive effects in the brain, positive effects for heart health, um, positive effects throughout the body too. And most of the uh, uh, claims that you've heard that it causes uh, you know, problems with water retention or stuff like that. All of these things have been uh, shown to be untrue. Check out uh, the JISSN. That's the Journal of the ISSN. They have a great, just type in JISSN 
and then um, do creatine. They have a great uh, thing um, that just reviews all of the different uh, questions about creatine um, to put your mind at ease about using it uh, in the future. Um, if you are going to use a creatine, I would use the dosage that is recommended by the JISSN, which is uh, 7 to 10 grams loading phase for short time, and then uh, 5 gram dosage. Uh, using creatine monohydrate, that's the one that is most used in the studies. Don't fall for the marketing of uh, all these uh, wild forms of creatine, uh, like creatine nitrate and stuff like that. Um, I just use straight up creatine monohydrate. It's safe, proven effective. Find a brand out there that does have a vegan certification on it. And um, um, uh, and then uh, make sure that it's got that symbol on it too. Um, one of the best creatines out there as far as an ingredient goes is a, is a branded material called Crea Pure. It is tested for 99% plus purity. So if you find a product out there that is certified vegan and using Crea Pure, that would be a good choice for you. Let me know on your feedback. Do you think I should uh, go ahead and um, present this because it's so safe, because it's so efficacious, and because it's also can be certified vegan and very clean? Uh, should I go ahead and uh, bring one of these out? I'd love your feedback. Uh, but I, I thought this study, which was just out uh, recently, was a very important one to um, get to the this this blow up this myth that there's advantages to eating animal products because of the creatine. And that's just simply not true according to the research. Remember this cited over 65 different studies in this review, very good review. I will uh, point out that this review was done by people who have a bias intent, um, but the research is all there so you can read the citations and the quotations yourself. And I think it was very well done and even handedly done looking at all the different studies. They did even show studies that uh, some had a slightly benefit, some had a slight negative, but overall, when you take all the research together, there was some variations, and those variations could be accounted for by lots of different things um, that are confounding factors, different things that may have influenced the outcome slightly or another. But overall, when you look at all of the data together, it paints a very clear picture. One, that creatine from food isn't really making a difference as far as ergogenic effects. Um, two, that uh, the difference between um, the endogenously created creatine in, in uh, vegans is not much different than the amount uh, that is, is found in omnivores, even with endogenous and dietary creatine. And then two, the, basically it caps out when you use supplemental creatine, there's a maximum amount of benefit and use that the body can utilize and supplemental creatine in the proper dosages that roughly that five gram dose will, will get you to levels that will not make a difference in performance regardless of what diet uh, um, you're looking at. So. I hope this has been a good one for you. Thanks for all your comments and, and feedback. Um, great to see some other people using it out there. You know, I really want to show people what can uh, you can accomplish through natural, or even in this case, synthetic, but natural approaches without the use of drugs. That's why I named my company Clean Machine. I want to encourage people to stay away from the drugs, to, um, to to, to take the natural path, go out there, take pride in your accomplishments, take pride in using these. And remember this study was very important because it said, yes, there is a clear difference between the uh, those using supplemental creatine and not getting it from a diet. Remember, vegans don't get it from the diet. We produce it endogenously, but not enough to actually get to levels that affect our performance. So using supplements, if that is your goal to increase your performance, increase your overall health, remember creatine has health benefits to it as well, both for the brain. Check it out, just type it in and you can look at the heart benefits, the brain benefits, all the other different benefits of creatine. The studies are out there. It's one of the most, if not the most researched and studied for safety and efficacy of all of the supplements out there. That's why I'm considering possibly uh, bringing it to market in a very clean and uh, a pure fashion. Um, if, if, that's, uh, if, if, 
you know, our customers out there really want that, I, I'd be happy to do that. So thank you for listening. I hope this was great. I'll post more of the uh, comment in the comments so that everybody can follow up on the studies. One of the studies um, you will get to the using the link, you will get to a page where you actually have to sign up in order to get the uh, full uh, PDF. I encourage you to do it. It's a it's a long page, uh, 16 pages or something like that, but it's a really good read if you want to understand the way it works, the differences, all of the research they looked at, men and women, the health benefits, the risks of the HCAs. All of it's in there. It's a really well-written piece of literature looking at the review. And it's simple to read too. It's not too sciencey. So I think you can get, most people can get through this and get a very clear understanding. It's very well-written uh, review paper. Check it out um, and uh, let me know your feedback. Thank you all for, for joining us. This was a great one. Um, it's great to bust another myth that no, the creatine in animal products is not an advantage. And as a matter of fact, it could actually result in carcinogenic compounds being created. Much better for you to create it endogenously by getting sufficient amounts of protein and then adding supplemental creatine. This study was very clear that supplemental creatine makes a huge difference despite the diet that you consume. We'll see you next week. I'll keep bringing these great studies out there. Let's crush than this. Let's prove what we can accomplish totally naturally and on a plant-based diet. Invite everybody in and show them what can be done. Increase your health, improve your health, and, and also your level of fitness so you can enjoy a lifelong, prosperous life. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next week.